planes will generate half a million jobs. Where is the industry going? Um, this is, uh, again, it's part of a different presentation that I decided to give you a, a, a little runoff. And, uh, but in reality, uh, um, the, the U.S. is about half of what the business jet industry is absorbing. Uh, uh, for some of you uh, who are probably from foreign countries, uh, if you are from Brazil, Russia, India, and China, and the Middle East, and, and some of you are, are here, uh, there is tremendous growth in those regions for this sector. Tremendous growth uh, that sometimes is not met by employees or by, by uh, professionals in those parts of the world, and tremendous opportunities for anyone that wishes to, to, tra to travel and, and, and bring your training and your know-how to those uh, parts of the world. This is a very interesting uh, chart that shows uh, how many airplanes. This, this is where we ended 2008. This is where we are 2009. And from here, you can see until 2019, the next 10 years is growth. Uh, what I call the new normal is that this peak is really not, not, not was not real. It, it was more here. So we'll, we'll join the new normal in 2015. Again, one, if, if there is something that I'd like you to take with you is if you want to see how an industry, including the aviation industry, private or air transport is doing, just take a look at the gross domestic product forecasts. You can make a linear correlation between those two. And keep that in mind. Every airplane means 10 direct jobs and 40 indirect jobs is 50 jobs. The growth we see is moderate. Uh, that, that's more rational than this. This was too much of a slant, and basically that was the bubble we, we were talking about. And this report is from Honeywell. Every year they produce a report on this sector of the industry. The winners and the losers, the, and the losers on the industry, the winners are going to be, uh, the, the losers we started first is basically people who speculated in this industry, people who came in uh, without the commitment that some of us have here, some uh, distinguished uh, uh, organizations like the Pepsi Flight Department, Jet Aviation, two of the biggest names in this sector, who are here to stay. They stayed before, they went through the crisis, and they will stay uh, afterwards. What we see now is a cleansing of the opportunistic people that came here and bloated the market and the people that are here to stay. Uh, and that is, uh, those are the, the, the winners. The losers are the people that came and tried to speculate with aircraft as investment tools to make a quick buck. And yes, they created expectations in the manufacturers, they created expectations with the banks, they didn't meet them, and we had the, the bubble bursting. The good news is that the future looks good. After 2011, it's back to a new normal, a new escalation, more moderate, less ambitious, but again, with plenty of opportunities and, and, and plenty uh, of jobs for everyone. This shows a little bit the, uh, the breakdown between uh, type of business jets that are going to be delivered and uh, basically uh, the large cabin uh, by market share. Uh, it's about 40% but it's 68% of the billings because it's the largest one. The small cabin is more proportion but less value because they are cheaper. This is just an informational um, slide this that talks about Brazil, Russia, India, China, and Middle East Gulf region. Those are the, the, the strong growth regions for business jets and private aviation. I personally am bullish on those countries, and uh, I would recommend anyone interested in this sector to take a good look. I saw on one of the questions somebody in the audience asked about how about job opportunities in the Middle East. Uh, I have an, an expert in the audience that I'll address later who knows exactly what the opportunities are in that part of the world. But the same applies for Brazil, Russia, India, and China for those adventurous enough to go there and, and work. Some of the uh, purchase expectations by region. I, I, I want to see that, I want to show you this. This is very interesting. Asia today is the part of the world that has the most potential to grow their business jet aviation industry, uh, mainly because China has, has constrained the growth of this sector due to political reasons. But in terms of, of, of relative growth is the, the first region, and followed by the Middle East, Africa, Europe, and North America has the less proportion, but this is growth and not total numbers. I'll give you the, the, uh, uh, an idea of, 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 of the proportion. In the US, basically, the, uh, we have 75% of all business jets in the world, about 16,000 of them. The rest of the world combined has about 5,000. This is the same uh, pie chart of what I just said. And basically, the message here is uh, 
economic growth of, uh, uh, of any country uh, has attached to it, uh, business jet and corporate aviation growth. Uh, keep an eye on that. If somebody tells you, uh, look, there's a great job opportunity on a business jet environment uh, in a country that has a negative GDP or is not growing, you might have found an opportunity, but it's possibly not going to last for too long. You have a business aviation drives GDP and vice versa. So that's a very interesting metric. If, if, if you take that with you and apply it any time you look at the, the, the aviation sector, you can't go wrong with that. Uh, we're talking a little bit about financing in this webinar. I won't bore you with that, but basically the financing uh, train stopped with the crisis, but it's starting to loose up. A little bit of, of those details. And uh, 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 who is using the business jets? This, this is an interesting, uh, an interesting conversation. These are the number of operators uh, worldwide. But, but one thing is very clear: uh, users of business jets. If you do a direct correlation between their prosperity, their efficiency, their competitiveness, is 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 dead on. It's directly related to it. Um, the the concept of business jets as toys or as a uh, luxury tools or uh, as, as excess symbols applies to probably 0.5, of the users. It's true, some movie stars in Hollywood, they fly the business jet because it's nice to impress people. But the other 99%, that business jet is generating wealth. Uh, we did a study in Florida when an air taxi company started service. Uh, and we compared the impact of a business jet carrying four executives landing uh, at a certain airport daily, and the economic impact that the people who fly on that business jet make on that community was the equivalent of two 737s with 150 normal passengers or, or transient passengers each. Why? Because the people on that business jet are they're building factories, expanding their business, actually creating wealth, creating jobs. And that is uh, something very, very important. Uh, and the, the message is that this industry, even though the planes are very expensive, the planes are very, very private, very, very well appointed, they are wealth producing tools. Fuel, uh, this again is not so much applicable to us. It's not as critical for this sector because it's less sensitive on its prices. And then uh, what's happening with business jet uh, travel now? After all the, the, the publicity and the press and the political attacks to it, uh, again, I'm, I'm glad to say MBAA has uh, resolved that together with AOPA and some of the other associations. But one thing has emerged from this crisis and, and, and this situation and was evident at MBAA is what I call right sizing, right pricing. Even though business jet aviation was efficient and effective before, is getting to another level where people who are users are now sharpening their pencils a little bit more and they are demanding from manufacturers to build the right aircraft with the right mission capabilities. The industry has gotten smarter, uh, both the banks that finance the airplanes and the users. So in a way, it, this has been a wake up call and the industry which was effective and efficient now is even more. The uh, regulators, uh, have to be kept in check, and that's something MBAA does very well. Safety is up. Uh, it's one of the safer ways of flying. Uh, security is also up, but there are uh, uh, challenges here and there. The emission trading scheme, for instance, the, the environmental entities are trying to tax this industry, and uh, we have to be careful with that and be proactive and not allowing uh, the industry to be choked. And by the way, in that sector alone, the, the opportunities that exist for aviation professionals are tremendous. Anybody who is in engineering, anybody who is in technology can work now, and there are plenty of job opportunities looking for alternative fuels, for instance. Fuels that don't depend on oil, fuels that are cleaner. Uh, those are some of the less obvious uh, opportunities that exist around this this uh, sector. People would think a business jet needs two pilots, a couple of mechanics, a dispatcher, uh, 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 three engineers or, or uh, people to support it. Many, many more people support the industry. You have attorneys specialized on the airplanes, uh, tax accountants, business managers, a, a, a alternative energy research. Um, I invite all of you to look at this industry and look at the commerce chain that supports it. And uh, I think you'll be very, very impressed of how many opportunities exist for, for well-trained, well-educated people like yourselves. 
the very large jet sector will survive. This is another another conversation, and this is something that uh, will.